Merlin, I swear to God, don't you dare! You, oh my God, you jackass, Merlin! Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing really, really well. Today is going to be one of the first Merlin-centered videos in a while, and that is because Merlin is coming back into work. So today is March 8th, it's International Women's Day. Basically, I thought that it would be fun and useful to some people to make a video about the process of me, hi guys, bringing Merlin back into work. So he's now been off like not fully off, I've been on it maybe three or four times since mid-December and we're now nearly mid-March, so that's three months. I think the break was something that he needed because we got to a point where he just he was doing everything I asked and I just felt that he deserved a little break to be a baby and to grow. He had done so much for me. Hi, Saf. This one's not about you. This is what positive reinforcement does. Horses won't leave you alone. On Tuesday, he went into the arena and just kind of chilled, had a look around. And tonight, I'm gonna let him loose first and then I might stick him on the long lines for probably just 10, 15 minutes, walk, maybe a little bit of track. Do you remember this? Ooh, it's dusty. Oh my, you have filled out. Woo oh. My goodness, Merlin. So for context, it's on like fourth hole from the bottom on one side, second hole on the other side. There is still room to tighten it. But the last time I used it on him was probably, oh God, June, like he hasn't been long line in like probably seven or eight months. Doing it up, I was able to start with it on the fifth hole. I'm letting him tell me the pace that he is ready to come back into work at. But even just, putting the saddle pad and the sur single on, the bridle, is a good step. And something else I'm just gonna mention is you'll notice I'm wearing a helmet. And when he's in full work and I'm long lining him, I don't tend to wear a helmet, but where he's coming back in to work, I'm just doing it for safety because as I've demonstrated in several videos, he can be a little explosive when it's chilly. Can we try to get your bridle on? What do you think? Oh my. <laughs> you can't bite my helmet, buddy. First time being bridled in like four months. I haven't really used the bit since November because even the few weeks before he came out of work that I was still riding him, he wasn't wanting to accept the bit. That told me that he was capping because he's normally really good at accepting the bridle. So we'll see what today tells us. And if not, we will use his bitless. Hey, okay? what do you think? What do we think? Oh, good boy. Oh, good man. Good job. That is what he's normally like to bridle. Back in November, he was like lifting his head and like backing up and like refusing to take it. I took that as a sign that he was capping as he did the same thing early 2022 when he was capping. And the minute I switched to the bit list, he was awesome. So that's great. What a good boy. Okie dokie. So we're out in the arena. He's loose. I've just taken the, um, don't bite that saddle pad. I've taken the reins and just put them over his neck and made it so that he can't get his foot stuck in them. And I'm just gonna let him explore at his own leisure. This is what I've been doing with Eve lately. It's what I did with him all last year. And if he's chill, I'll put him on the long lines for a few minutes. And if not, I'll just let him explore. I'm hoping that he just kind of goes exploring on his own. There are some distractions set up. Hey, don't grab that, Bubba. No. Oh, you jackass. Merlin, you know. <laughs> Merlin. You can take the jackass out of the paddock. Merlin, Jesus, let go. I, yeah, you're in a shit disturbing mood. Let go, what a bad boy. Oh my goodness. Are you checking out the jumpy? You might be doing some of that later this year. Yes, don't. I swear, oh my God. So, so far he's not doing much, but this, I think this footage shows really well how much he's filled out in the last little while. Merlin, I swear to God, don't you dare. You, oh my God, you jackass. Merlin, stop. My Jesus Christ. It's so funny because he did the exact same thing in my first video. Seriously, come here. <laughs> Take this as a deterrent. No, I know you really don't 
care about this, but at least I can hold it out so you don't take the saddle pack. You're so bad. You're naughty. Can we do some long lining? Huh? Just a little bit, yeah? Okay. I turn around for one second. Merlin! <laughs> And this is why I always wait. Don't you dare. He just ripped this. No. You are in such a mood. And off he goes. <laughs> really? Oh, you're so bad. Oh my goodness. Monkey. Yeah, there is no way I'm getting behind you to long line tonight. Not a chance. Dude, what are you doing? No, you get away from me. You're in such an unpredictable mood. <laughs> you get... So I think he's finally chilling out a little bit, but there is no way that I'm getting behind that hind end tonight. <sighs> so now I owe someone a saddle pat. Yes, jackass. So, needless to say, we did not long line, did we? No, because you're in a very mischievous mood. Letting him loose in the arena is so much more exhausting than letting Eve loose in the arena, that's for sure. Given his shenanigans tonight, I didn't end up longlining, but there are some positives from the session. He took the bit, put the saddle pad on with the surcingle, and he got a sense of moving with some tack on again. So I'm gonna count it as a win. You gotta start somewhere. The amount of energy he had tonight definitely told me that until the weather gets warmer, I'm probably going to need to be doing some lunging. I try to avoid lunging him as much as possible because of the pressure that it can put on their joints, but safety is also a thing. Until next time. So it is now Saturday. So yeah, with him, part of the thing is knowing what is best to do on the day. So like I had planned today to longline him, but it's a gorgeous day and there's no wind. So I'm actually going to bring him out and lunge him and get on, but I'm going to lunge him first because we might have some spring fever. voiceover Caitlin is back with a vengeance but this time it is voiceover Caitlin frog edition because I am sick as a dog so all in all I was on Merlin this day for 25 or 30 minutes I had been planning on riding him for less time than that but he was just tense so I wanted to make sure that we got to a certain level of relaxation before we stopped so when I first got on he was forward and a little bit lucky but his energy didn't feel nervous it felt more excited so so we walked for I want to say about 10 minutes before we started any trot and while we were walking I noticed that he was being a bit mouthy with the bit. This was actually his first time wearing a bit in months so it was totally understandable. And I also find that horses tend to play with the bit a bit more when they're feeling a bit tense or amped which he definitely was on this day as you can see there. So then we went up into a trot for a couple of minutes doing some walk trot transitions but then the other horse that was in the arena left and he like his energy level just went up and he was so much more alert and nervous, which I was expecting. So we went back to the walk and focused on de-escalating his stress signals and just making him feel relaxed after his buddy had left the arena. And all things considered, like I think he behaved very well for a rising four-year-old who hadn't been in work for three months. At both the walk and the trot, I wasn't asking him to go into any sort of contact. I was just trying to keep a steady connection on the reins and to keep just a steady pace. And he definitely settled as we went on, starting to seek the contact of his own volition. The only thing is that he does have a tendency to dip above and below the vertical when he's feeling a bit unsure. So when he does that, I try to just encourage him to seek a stretch like you see here. Yes, here he's not stretching properly, but he is starting to seek a longer and lower contact and not dipping above and below the vertical as much. So I was very happy. When he starts to dip his head below or behind the vertical, I just kind of like raise my inside hand, create a bit of a barrier so that he doesn't get his nose tucked into his chest because that is not what we want for a young horse or any horse for that matter. But I really can't complain for a young horse who's been out of work for so long. He obviously has lost some of the muscle that he had built towards consistently carrying his head carriage in the proper way. 
So I'm just heading home from the farm and I thought that I would do a little debrief because I tried to do one just after I got off and I wasn't very articulate. I had been planning on doing like some long lining and lunging and things like that. The thing is, is I know how he can be at this time of year and he can be very spunky and spooky. To be honest, I find that type of behavior much easier to deal with when I'm on the horse than when I'm on the ground. So I decided to get on him today because quite often with Merlin, I know him well enough now that I have a pretty good sense of what he needs on any given day. And it's not like he's coming out of three months in the paddock having not done anything. Like I hacked him a couple of times in January. He's been in the ring a lot. A few weekends ago, I wanna say just before Valentine's Day, so actually nearly a month ago now, I got on a bareback in a halter two days in a row just because I felt like it. So he's not completely coming in, like it's not like I pulled him out of the field. So basically I decided to do a ride today because it just felt right. And there was another horse in the arena and about eight or nine minutes after I got on, the horse left. So that kind of upped his energy a little bit. He was a little bit anxious, but he did settle really nicely. I really just focused on keeping a soft hand. I wasn't asking him to connect at all. I was just trying to keep an even contact. And I just tried to keep my energy level following him with my hands and supporting him so that he didn't feel abandoned. At the end of the ride, like maybe five minutes before I got off the recording cut out because my phone was nearly dead, which is annoying because he actually ended on a really beautiful, beautiful stretch. And it's also important for me to recognize that the precedent that Merlin set last year was based on warmer weather. Like he's never been ridden at this time of year before and he's not going to be 100% perfect the first time back. I'm actually really proud of how he held himself together. I could tell that he wanted to trot. He wanted to have a little play. He didn't feel nervous or stressed. He just had energy. But yeah, so there were some moments of brilliance today. Lots to work on, obviously, but I'm for a first ride back, I'm like, I'm really pleased. So it is the next day and I've just let him loose and I'm just going to let him kind of chill for a few minutes and then I'll probably get on. It's another nice, calm, chill day. So I think it's a good day to have another little ride. Well, you're not seeming too concerned. You itchy? No, I know you have some zoomies in there. Come on. Yeah. Have a look at the box that you spooked at yesterday. <laughs> you can look at it, come on, bud. You gonna come have a look at it? Come on, follow. Look. Good boy. Just don't, <clears throat> eat the flowers. Damn this. So it's okay to eat from, but it's scary when you trot by it. Is that it? Look at that gorgeous man. A little fat, but we'll fix that. Slow, steady work. You're not seeming very exuberant. So we just get on. All right, I'm trusting ya. Croaky Caitlin is back with another voiceover because for whatever reason, when I record on my Pivo, sometimes the sound doesn't record very well and you can't hear anything. So I thought that it might be interesting to compare how he was feeling at the beginning of this ride versus at the beginning of the ride the day before. So this ride on Sunday was about 20 minutes long versus the one on Saturday was about 30 minutes long. And straight from the start, he felt so much more relaxed. You can see me walking him around and taking him up to the corners that he found spooky yesterday. Now he had gotten over his kind of aversion or spooky of these corners by the end of his time under saddle last year but it's been a while so he just needs to be re-exposed to them you can see there he spooks at a pigeon which will be a consistent theme throughout the video not the spooking but the pigeon so at the beginning of this ride I spent a lot of time just making sure that he was comfortable making sure that he was relaxed asking him to stretch down into a contact which he didn't really do but he was kind of taking his nose forward and started to hear which I was happy about and then we went the other way and I did the same thing just exposing him to those two corners that he finds a bit scary you'll notice that in both of these rides I don't go down to the other end because that's an end that he finds even scarier so we're gonna do things slowly so we went up into a trot and even though he had seen the scary corners at the walk I find that he was trying to look 
out and something we were working on before he went on his break was him bending around and off my inside leg so when he doesn't do that it's very easy for him to look out and spook so that is definitely one of the main things that we'll be working on in the coming weeks so I just brought him back down to a walk and let him look at it again something that I find actually really helpful with horses who are having a hard time bending around your inside leg but want to look out to spook is that you can kind of envision that you're gonna go on a 15 meter circle and leg yield out towards the wall and for me it's more of a mental thing than anything else because I can envision that I'm going on a circle which automatically makes me not rely on the wall as much and rather more on my outside leg and outside rein to keep him from drifting and by doing this he just naturally goes on a more proper bend and isn't able to look out as much. This is something that my coach taught me in the process of working with a mare that I used to ride who was actually the first horse that I ever started under saddle and it's been incredibly helpful with all the young horses I've worked with since. So just a couple of notes before I let the rest of the footage speak for itself. You can see he's much less mouthy with the bit. He's a lot more consistent in his head carriage and just overall seems a lot happier and more relaxed. So unfortunately about 13 minutes into the ride my pivo died and I had to get off and just set my phone up at a kind of boring angle so some of this footage is far away but it shows kind of how he spooks <laughs> no it shows how he really improves throughout the ride you can see there are sections where he is tucking his nose more towards his chest than I would like but I'm leaving it in because it's the reality of working with young horses. All you can do is encourage their nose forward and let them build up the strength to carry themselves properly. I think the footage from this ride shows how he gradually starts to get a longer and longer head carriage, starts to stretch his nose down more, and is just way more relaxed than he was the day before. This boy is all cooled out and ready to go back outside. And he was such a good boy. I'm mostly gonna let the riding footage speak for itself because like the difference between yesterday and today is like night and day, which I guess is technically the difference between one day and another, isn't it? Thoughts on that philosophical treatise? I think I'm actually gonna end this video here. I was only gonna do one video about the process of bringing him back into work, but I think I'm gonna do like a video a week for the next couple of weeks. So this week involved three work sessions, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then on Friday, he had a body work session. You enjoyed it. And I have exercises that I do with him now. And I can tell that he definitely like doesn't have the same stamina that he had ages ago. We did maybe five minutes of trotting today. The ride lasted maybe 22, 23 minutes total. And I'm just so pleased. There was a pigeon that was very persistent, weren't they? He used to be scared of birds. And then last summer he kind of got over it, but it's understandable that your fear might come back where you haven't been in the arena that much in the last few months. And I'm gonna bid you adieu. I hope you enjoyed this video. He's now gonna have probably at least two days off. And then we'll do a long lining session because we are still gonna do more long lining. Until next time we hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are don't forget to hit the like button comment down below and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more and yeah until next time see ya are you gonna say bye yes are you gonna say bye